How you doing? I'm Brad Gilbert and welcome to Sports School. Today we're going to work on grooving the strokes. One of my favorite things to do. I did a ton when I was a kid. Let's start with the forehand. And don't forget that here on Sports School, you can use your own remote to stop, pause, rewind, and fast forward any of the training techniques that we are demonstrating. This means you are in total control. You can learn at your own pace. Now let's start with one of my favorite drills, the six ball forehand. This is a great drill to work with your cardio and the forehand preparation. Go three cross court and then do three down the line. All right, Adrian, you're up first, buddy. Now Yaz is feeding. Look up how Adrian gets around and then get back to the middle. Get around, get back to the middle. The key to this is moving your feet. Never stop moving. Rack it above the ball. And you want to practice keep moving. This is a great drill to keep moving and, and hitting, getting some height over the net. When you run around the forehand, the big key is getting a little height over the net. So when you run around it, you buy time to get back in the middle. If you hit the ball when you run around, it's so low over the net, you don't have time to recover. So remember the key when you run around, get back to home base. All right, Julie, let's see your bicycle. I right, get around. I hit and recover. See how she keeps moving her feet? Hit and recover. Nice high over the net. Rack it above the ball. Very nice. Also, when you do this drill, let's say if you do a series, you're working with a good junior player, you want to do a series of four to six of them, and you want to do about a 30-second recover. Don't make the guy do, or girl, do six balls, and then, okay, let's do it again. You need a little recovery time. All right, yeah, see if I got anything. Make me move a little bit. Okay, see, I want to get above the ball, and I want to hustle back to the middle. Now I want to get a little height. Always be moving. That's the key. And then after you do the good six balls, you take a little breather, you walk, maybe take a little sip, get back, get ready to do. Four to six of those three times a week, your forehand is on its way to being a great shot. This is a great drill for grooving the backhand. With Adrian and Julie, we got the best of both worlds. We got the one-hander in Adrian, and we got a two-hander in Julie. So we'll be able to take a look at both. Adrian, you're up first. Let's have a look at the backhand. Now, the key on the backhand here is early preparation. With the one-hander, it's a really good idea to work on the backhand cross court, getting some height, and then recover. Go three cross court, and then do three down the line. Also, with the one-hander, you want to be able to, not all of us can hit over every backhand like a good pro, so we want to work on the slice a little bit too as well. Good slice, very nice. So on that, on the backhand, when you have a one-handed backhand, it's really good to work on that real good shoulder turn. The earlier you have the racket preparation, the earlier you have opportunities to do things. If you get turned late and you don't prepare early, you're going to hit the ball late and you're going to hit the ball out a lot. So remember, Turn those shoulders and get your racket back as soon as possible. Now let's look at the two-hander from Julie, because most players today have a two-handed backhand. Nice racket preparation. Notice she's stepping in with the right leg and going cross court. Now let's hit a few down the line. Now the down the line for a two-hander is such an advantage because it's a much easier shot to hit when you're two hands and one hand because your left hand does so much more of the work. Excellent. All right, let's see if old school here can hit a few backhands. Come on, Yaz, make me look good. All right, see how I want to get my racket to turn, I want to step in, and then I want to recover. Don't watch your shot. No admiration. Now the slice. Down the line is a good place to hit the slice when you're one-hander. Oh, not in the net, though. But remember on grooving the backhand. Get some height and think cross-court first. 
Down the line, second. That's the key to a good back hit. In the modern game, there is nothing more important than the footwork. If you hit one good shot, I call it admiration. A lot of us like to just stare at it. Ooh, I hit a good one. But that doesn't quite do it. Remember, the ball comes back. So I call it, right here on the tee, is home base. When you hit a good shot, anticipate it's gonna come back, and you wanna get back to home base. The sooner you are back to the middle, the more options you have for taking the ball early and doing something positive. Don't ex anticipate that the ball's not coming back. I always say in my head, it's coming back, I'm gonna keep working, keep shuffling, till I get right back here, till I get something short and fat that I can put away. And remember, don't stare at your shots. It's only one shot, get back to the middle, and you're only as good as your footwork. The quicker you move, the more options you got, the better chances you got to win. One of my favorite footwork drills to work on is the old windshield wiper. That's where you hit three forehands, three backhands, alternating, you know, moving a little further in between each one. I've seen numerous pros working on this. Julie, you're up first. The best lady I ever saw at this was a Rancha Sanchez Vicario. She would do this until she was just blue in the face. The real key for this drill is getting some height over the net and buying yourself some time to get back to the middle. Hitting and moving, hitting and moving. Very nice, very nice. All right, Adrian, come on. Cross court, move, stick and move. The best guy I ever saw doing this, Michael Chang. He, he had more speed than I had lost. Come on, buddy. This is a great way for really grooving your strokes along with moving your footwork. You want to do about four to six of these with about a 30 second break in between. Once again, you don't want to do this consecutively. If you coaches at home saying, okay, I want to blow a gasket of my kid or the player I'm working with, not good. Get about 30 seconds recovery because otherwise your strokes get sloppy. And if your strokes get sloppy when you're doing this, you're not doing yourself any good. So you want good, clean strokes with technique and moving. Remember, hit and move, don't stare at the ball. Let me do one here, don't make me run too hard. I'm no Michael Chang, I think I'm more like Leighton Hewitt. I'm only kidding. I wish I had Leighton Hewitt's speed to lose. Remember, keep moving. Shuffling those feet and breathing in between shots. Remember, you're not underwater. Breathe and relax. That's the key to good footwork. You have three good options for really grooving the stroke. The first, that old dreaded ball machine. Pop about 100 balls in the ball machine, good technique, and really getting that long swing. The second is the wall. Wall never misses a shot. And the key to when you're really working on the wall is that early preparation. You gotta get ready quicker on the wall because the ball will come back to you much quicker. The last option is if you have a regular doubles partner or somebody you play, once a week, trying to get some nice height over the net and try to see if you can make 10, 15 balls in a row. If you can make 10, 15 balls in a row with your opponent, about two to three feet over the net, you're starting to really groove the swing. <laughs>